Hello again. Do you remember, in a previous lesson, we used a scale drawing to work out the resultant force when two forces pulled up against a third vertical force pulling downwards. You remember the force board that we used. The positions of the strings show the directions of the forces. We drew the positions of the strings and then drew force vectors along those directions. We used a scale of 3 cm for 1 newton. Sometimes we have to calculate vectors instead of drawing them to scale, and in this lesson, we see how to do it. Here's Andile. He has to move a heavy water pump off a truck. The pump is hanging from a steel cable, and that is attached to a crane. The water pump needs maintenance, and so Andile has to pull the pump onto a workbench. The weight of the pump is 8,000 newtons, and Andile pulls it to the right with a force of 1,000 newtons. It's the same situation that we had with the forces board. The pump is the knot in the middle, and that weight is in equilibrium with the two forces pulling upward and a little to each side. Now let's draw the force vectors in this situation. This blue vector shows the weight of the pump. This yellow vector shows the tension in the cable. This orange vector is the sideways pulling force of Andile on the pump. And this red vector is the resultant of the tension vector plus Andile's pull vector. This red output vector is the sum of the yellow and the orange vectors. There is no actual cable where you see the red vector. But the red vector represents a resultant upward force to balance the weight which is the blue downward vector. We know that the upward and downward forces are in equilibrium because the pump is not falling. If we add the blue downward vector and the red upward vector, the resultant of the upward and downward vectors is zero. Remember that the red upward vector was the sum of the yellow tension vector and the orange sideways pull vector. How strong must the cable be? In other words, what is the tension force in the cable? We know the magnitude and direction of the weight. The weight is a force straight downwards and it's 8,000 newtons. We also know the force and delay applies to the pump, 1,000 newtons to the right. The pump is not falling down, so there must be an output force of, well, can you work it out? Here's the answer. We call this vector R for resultant force. It's the resultant of the tension and the pull. And it must be 8,000 newtons, because the pump weighs 8,000 newtons. We don't yet know the tension force T in the cable, but we do know that if we add the tension vector T and Andele's pull vector P, they must give us the resultant vector R, which is 8,000 newtons. Now, what is the tension force in the cable? You might think, well, the cable is still holding up the pump which weighs 8,000 newtons, so the tension must be 8,000 newtons. Let's use vectors to test that idea. You saw that the cable is no longer pulling straight up. It is pulling at an angle. We can use the theorem of Pythagoras to work out the tension. Here's a quick reminder of the Pythagoras theorem. Look at the triangle here. It's very important to note that this is a triangle with one angle of 90 degrees, which we call a right angle. The theorem won't work for all triangles, only for right-angled triangles. The side facing the right angle is called the hypotenuse, and in this diagram, you can see that it is called side C. The two other sides are called sides A and B. Pythagoras said, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Our vectors represent the magnitude and direction of the forces but we can work with vectors as though they were the sides of a triangle. We'll slide the t-vector to the right. We can do this because we are not changing the magnitude or direction of vector t. By vector addition, vector p plus vector t 
add up to give us vector r. See how we place the tail of vector t at the head of vector p. If those two vectors act, their combined action is the same as the action of vector r. That's why r is called the resultant. Now we'll just look at the magnitudes, that is, the lengths, of the three vectors. You can see that we have a right-angled triangle because r must be vertically up and Andela pulls to the right horizontally. Pythagoras' theorem for right-angled triangles tells us that length t squared equals length p squared plus length r squared. So now we can work out the length of vector t by taking the square root of each side of the equation. t is the square root of 1,000 squared plus 8,000 squared. The answer is in newtons because we are working out the tension in the cable. The tension comes out as 8,062 newtons if we round off. So the tension in the cable actually increases as Andela pulls the pump to one side. We can analyze this situation a bit further. What is the angle theta here when Andela pulls with a thousand newton force? We can use trigonometry to find out. Here we have right angle triangles because Andela pulls horizontally and the weight and resultant are vertical. Look at the vectors forming the right angled triangle. We see that we can find the tan ratio of angle theta by taking the ratio of the side opposite to theta divided by the side adjacent to theta. That means vector r over vector p. So we write the tan ratio, which is r divided by p, which is 8,000 divided by 1,000, which is 8. Using your calculator and the arctan function, you'll find that theta is 82,9 degrees. Now here's a question that the tan function will answer for us. Andela needs to move the pump a bit further to the side. How hard will Andela have to pull to make angle theta equal to 40 degrees? In other words, about half its present size. Will he have to pull with about 2,000 newtons of force now? As before, the ratio of vector r over vector p is the tan of angle theta. We can multiply both sides of the equation by p because when we do that, the sides remain equal. So we get r equals p tan theta. Now divide both sides by tan theta and we get p equals r over tan theta. Put in the value of r, which we know is 8,000 newtons. Put in the size of theta, which we know is 40 degrees. Use your calculator to find the tan of 40 degrees. Now divide 8,000 by that number, 0, 0,84, and we find that the force is 9,534 newtons. How does this force compare with the previous force? To pull the pump to 40 degrees, Andile will have to pull with over 9 times his previous force of 1,000 newtons. That's more than the weight of the pump. That might be a surprise. Let's see why it happens. As he pulls the pump further to one side, the angle theta becomes smaller. Vector r stays constant. It's equal to the weight of the pump. But you can see that Andela's pull vector has to become bigger and bigger and bigger. As theta becomes smaller, the tan ratio of theta also becomes smaller. Look what happens to the tan ratio as the angle theta becomes smaller and smaller. The number at the bottom is the tan ratio of the angle 8000 divided by a smaller and smaller number becoming bigger and bigger. When the tan of the angle is 0, 0,05, the pull force would have to be 160,000 newtons. The pull force actually would tend to infinity. It means that no force will be strong enough to make theta zero and pull the pump and cable into a horizontal line. 
So now, do you know why washing lines and their poles have to be so strong? In the task video, you can use vectors to answer this question. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.